We are Mike and Jeannie, and we restore old houses. In 2021, we moved to South Carolina and bought a 120-year-old Victorian house. Follow along as we put the polish back on this Victorian masterpiece. Welcome back to 1834 Restoration House. We've been working all morning trying to get this room cleaned up because today is plaster day. It's the final top coat day. We've done all of the repairs in the room. All of the base coat is on and I think we're ready to go. Now we did find a couple of small spots this morning that were in bad shape. And so we scratched them off and we went ahead and put some new base coat on there and that's now currently setting. But by the time we get to them, they should be firm and ready to accept the top coat. So we have everything staged, everything is pre-measured. We've got a battle plan. We're gonna start on this wall here and then work our way around the room this way. We're doing something a little bit different today. We did some research on our own work and what we discovered was every time that we overlapped from new work to old work, that it turned gray like this. And we think what's happening is that we're probably getting too much suction of the moisture into the bonding layer below it. And doing a little deeper research, we think what the thing to do is to wet the wall first before we apply the plaster. And that way the wall is going to suck the water and it won't suck it all out of the plaster. And that'll give the plaster enough time to set up properly without losing its moisture. So we've got our special brush here. So there's some water on the wall along with a piece of my wife's hair. Now I want to get it on the wall and not all over the floor, so wish me luck in that regard. But see how it's taking up the water. If you tried to do this with sheetrock mud, you'd basically destroy it. You can't do that. But with plaster, it'll take this water and soak it up and then give it back up again as it evaporates back out. And that's one of the beautiful things about plaster is that it does breathe and it does absorb moisture. And then when conditions allow, that moisture that's in the plaster will evaporate right out without doing any harm to it. All right, what you're seeing here is top coat veneer plaster. And I'm going over it with a trowel, a wet trowel. And this is kind of like a polishing step. You just want to just smooth it down over and over again with a wet trowel until it's perfect.
smoothly without sticking. And if there's any trowel marks in it from when it was applied, this will tend to smooth them down. The only problem with doing this is we end up getting water all over the place. You see that on the trowel there? That's lime that's come to the surface. And we can actually use that because if there's any low spots or any divots or anything, that lime tends to deposit itself down into those. Right now I'm working with a kind of a medium pressure. plaster is not completely set, so I don't want to just rip it off the wall, obviously. But the medium pressure helps to get the plaster to lay down smooth and flat. There's a couple of reasons why this is important. One is that you make sure you have a nice smooth finish, smooth flat finish. But the other is the more you work it, the more pressure you put on there, it causes the plaster to really bond well with the wall. And we definitely have some experience with that recently. When we did the base coat, we couldn't really do this to it because we'd be polishing it. And when you polish base coat, the top coat won't stick to it. So we really didn't have much opportunity to work it. Here's the wall after applying the top coat of veneer plaster and then going back over it with a wet trowel and polishing it. And I can tell you right now, even though it's still somewhat wet, it's drying, but I can tell by touching this this is very smooth, almost like glass. It feels like glass to me. So this is gonna make a really nice finish. It just needs a few hours to dry out because we put a lot of water into this thing. It's gonna take some time for it to work its way through. And as it does, the limestone here will turn back into a rock and become nice and hard. Now, the only thing that I don't like about this, uh, and I can already see it happening up there, is we're getting a little bit of bleed through from something. I don't know what, but it's definitely coming through the color of the plaster. And I don't know if, if we induced that by putting the water in there and then something was able to leach through or not. I don't know. It doesn't happen everywhere. It just happens up there in that area because this all looks good. So we'll take a look at that later on and see how that turned out. It's the morning after we plastered this wall 
And this isn't quite what we were hoping to see when we got in here. Uh, we knew that there was a developing problem up there, but it got worse. Whatever they used in the past to fill the cracks bleeds all the way through the plaster. So two layers of plaster came all the way to the surface. Even after we put the bonding agent on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just came right through. Now the texture of the plaster is very nice. It's very smooth. But you can see all the white spots have that yellow in there. Yeah. And here's the weird part. We just, we don't understand why we're getting gray areas and we're getting white areas. We would think that by now, this would have all turned white. And I'm not really sure why, why that is, but we're starting to think now that we need to finish the plastering in this room and then paper over it and restore what was here originally. Because there is something on these walls, we don't know what, but there's something on these walls that's interfering with all of this stuff. And we've been fighting with it ever since we started plastering it here. Plaster isn't that difficult. It really isn't. Mm -hmm. There's no way anybody else has this much trouble because they started out with just the boards and batten. Welcome back to the bedroom and the plaster project never seems to end. So this plaster is two days old. This is top coat plaster and it's still blotchy and you can still see some discoloration that's come through in places, especially up there. So this is what we've been able to figure out. So the thing is when you put plaster on top of plaster, they have what's called suction. And that means that the base coat plaster underneath is trying to suck the water out of the top coat. And there's two ways to combat that. One is to wet the wall first to stop that suction so that your top coat can stay moist and can set up properly. The other way to stop suction is to put a bonding agent over the substrate before you put a top coat on. Well, we tried getting the walls wet. Several people suggested that we should do that. And this is exactly the way it turned out. Um, so what's happening here is the water penetrates through the base coat and then goes down into whatever's underneath that, which is the original plaster. We don't know what they did to these walls or what they put on them, but in certain areas, there's some kind of chemical or something that's being basically liquefied brought back through the plaster all the way out to the top and you can see that bleeding going on. So what we have here is a textbook perfect plaster system. Base coat, top coat. But yet we have all the blotchiness that's caused by the water and the suction and the bringing of chemicals up through it from beneath. And that's why it's blotchy. It should have been white. The whole thing should be a pure plaster white. If you'll follow me over this way, this section right here was done in the same thing, base coat, top coat, but we didn't put any water on this section and therefore it didn't bring anything up from below. Whereas it's not too bad, it's still not perfect white. And then yesterday we did this and this is pretty much okay for the most part, but it's still not perfect. And you can see here where an old crack was and whatever compound they used to patch that crack is bleeding through. So we have a serious issue here. A moment ago, I said that there's two ways to stop suction. One is to wet the wall, but that's obviously not an option because it starts bringing up crud from underneath and bringing it out to the surface. So that's off the table. The only other option is to use a bonding agent. And so we hunted down and we found the gold standard in bonding agent for plaster. So what we're gonna do, is apply this to the wall, and then while it's still tacky, we're gonna go ahead and follow that on with top coat plaster.
tried the water, it didn't work either. We got the wall wet before we put this plaster on and it didn't stick. We didn't have any cracks, but when we were putting on the glue, the plaster was coming off on the roller and it's a very liquid glue. So it should not have come off. It's not sticking. This one's not working either. I had a couple of interesting phone conversations today. I called the plaster company and I talked to them about what happened. And uh, I described exactly what we had done and how we had done it. And what he told me was that the bonding agent that we used was designed for concrete and probably shouldn't be used with plaster. So that was an interesting conversation. And then I got on the phone with the company that made the bonding agent that I had used. And I described to him what I had done and what had happened. And he says, he says, absolutely. He says, this product that we make is not recommended for plaster work. What they both did say though, and they both agreed, even the other bonding agent company said, plaster weld, plaster weld, plaster weld is the only bonding agent that should be used to bond plaster to a surface. So our plan right now is trying to get this plaster off of here and get back down to the substrate. And then we'll use plaster weld directly on the substrate and we'll build our plaster back up from there. Now, we don't know whether the rest of the walls are affected by this problem or not. And we really won't know until we try it. So this will be the guinea pig right here. Jeannie is applying plaster weld to the bare plaster. Now this is the substrate that was underneath everything that we had put on. And you can see some blotches here. These are actually bits of plaster that we couldn't get off. And that's great because it's stuck fast and it's not coming off. That's exactly what we want to see. So we're not going to force it. But the plaster weld is going to make it possible to put a new coat of plaster and make it stick to this stuff. And this plaster roll is called Larson's. And Larson's is the best. Everybody we've talked to said the same thing. So. Yep. The other bonding agent we used was more like putting milk on the wall. It was really hard to use and kept dripping all over everything. The plaster weld is thick. It's much nicer to put on the wall. Very nice. And it's colored, so you can tell where you've been and where you've missed. I had to go over the wall a few times because there was little spots that I missed. And it was really nice to know. I love this stuff. <laughs> I love it. Now that he's done getting all the nooks and crannies, time to get the base coat on first. And base plastering has begun. Now the Larson's is still tacky wet, as the container says it should be. plaster welded everything and then we went ahead and put base coat on wherever the bad plaster was wherever we could get it off what you see up here like these and these up here these islands are good plaster that wouldn't come off and we left them in place and went ahead and base coated everything else this is the wall we've decided to do next hopefully it goes well We'll get started with the Larson's plaster weld first, and then we will put on our top coat. 
It looks like you're putting Pepto-Bismol on the walls. Kind of looks like that, doesn't it? It does. This door is in my way. Yep. There we go. You got stuck. This bonding agent has an interesting aroma to it, and it's familiar though. Like I've smelled it somewhere before. Nothing I've cooked. No, nothing you've cooked. <laughs> but it really permeates the room. It's not a bad smell, it's not a toxic type smell. This is a low VOC product but it does have a characteristic aroma and it does disappear after you plaster over it. Thankfully. I like pink, but not in a bedroom. <laughs> We did find a local source of this, so if we do run out, we can always get more of it. While Jeannie works on that, I want to draw your attention to something. It was about 10 minutes ago that we showed you this wall looking absolutely the same color, but now you can start to see where it's darkening up. And it'll continue changing color as it dries. And most likely, when it's done, it probably will have a mottled shade to it. Wow, that's really pink. We're going to let this flash off for just a little bit, and then we'll go mix up some lime plaster, and we'll go ahead and put on the top coat. check it out so this is a top coat on top of plaster weld and hopefully hopefully this will dry down and become more consistent now we do have a problem here where we're getting a little bit of pink showing through and that's because the wall was a little bit uneven and so wherever the high spots were that's where the pink is showing through so we're going to let this rest and we'll come back to it later and we'll add another coat just a thin coat, and that should hide all of this stuff and hopefully make everything just beautiful white. Just a quick update on the base coat wall here. You can see where it's turning darker and darker. It's got a nice rough finish, which is perfect for the next coat of finished plaster. But it's gonna get darker and darker, and then, like magic, it starts to get lighter, and hopefully it will become a white color, but you know what, it doesn't matter because we're putting a top coat on, so we don't care what it looks like underneath. Now we're putting on our second top layer as a skim coat because we've got too many bumps and lumps and the pink was coming through from the Larsons. This way it'll be all beautiful and white, hopefully. <laughs> No yucky yellow stuff showing through, no pink stuff showing through. Should be beautiful.
We didn't get to film much, but here's a second coat on this wall. It's looking a whole lot better. And I'm really hoping that this dries out nice and smooth. So I'm just gonna wait a few minutes and then I'm gonna go back on it and start polishing it. Mike is doing the finished trawling now. It's gonna make it a nice, smooth finish. Takes out all the bumps. This is the next morning. Let's go take a look at the plaster and see how we did. All right, here we go. Take a look. Well, it looks pretty good. It's still gray for the most part. Some of it's not completely dry, but it's looking pretty good. It's not as smooth as we'd like. <laughs> Next time, we gotta wet it down a lot more and really polish it up but this worked pretty good. Nice. Very nice. Okay, this is the base coat plaster we put on yesterday. Um, if you recall, the plaster we put on before that had failed and we had to scrape a lot of it out because it didn't bond properly. And so we put the plaster weld on there and you can see the pink. And we went ahead and put a new base coat on there and it feels pretty solid. Now the blotchy appearance, not to worry, this is a, a base coat and it's not an appearance grade plaster and so if it looks like that, who cares? But we'll come back later and put some top coat on there and make it look good. Just taking a look at the finished coat plaster here, it's not perfect and it does have a little bit of blotchiness here. Uh, white versus semi gray off-white. I'm not exactly sure what causes that um, But I'm hoping that over time the next day or so that that kind of evens out and becomes more white I'm not exactly sure, but the finish of the wall Feels nice and smooth almost kind of glassy so anyway this wall is done and Now we have three more to do just like it this wall with the three windows is up next. This is the most difficult wall in the entire room, and that's because we have windows. And we have a very limited area in which we can trowel or plaster on, and our big trowel is not gonna work very well, so we're going to be switching to the small trowel, and we'll try to get in some of those details. But we're in a big hurry because we have about 45 minutes before the plaster starts going off. So what we're gonna do first is we'll lay on the plaster weld, get everything all pinked up, and then we'll come back and start putting some plaster over this base coat.
here's the finished coat on the window wall. Now we did run out and we weren't able to get pieces of that and pieces of that. We didn't get that either, which is okay because we actually have to go back and put a second coat on here, just a real thin skim. There were a few places where it was kind of bumped out a little bit and we were actually scraping bottom of a hilltop as we were applying it. And uh, we also had a problem with the plaster going off way sooner than it should have. We still don't understand why it did, but uh, we were really struggling at the end to get that on there and get it, get it kind of buffed down a little bit. So it's not the perfect finish that we're looking for, but we'll go back and redo that at some point. Our plastering skills have vastly improved over what they were a few weeks ago. It's and hard to get worse. <laughs> well, you got to start somewhere, right? Yes, you do. Yeah, so... Perseverance. 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 It's looking better. It, it is, is looking better. You know, we have a couple of little things here, but, yes. you know, whatever. It, it's plaster, and plaster wasn't meant to be perfect. <laughs> so, we've got this wall done. Uh, next week, we'll work on the two big walls, the one that has nothing on it, and this wall here that has the door on it. We'll get them plastered up. And uh, after that, maybe we can get back to some paint stripping. Ooh, you'll get to paint stripping and I gotta paint that other bedroom. Paint the other bedroom? Yes. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> it looks really run down. It's the white bedroom that just looks tired. It so does. So I'm just gonna put a basic old fashioned kind of color over it. Yep. And that way it looks fresher for the next people. Mm -hmm. We don't have time to do a whole nother skim coat. Yeah. <laughs> over the whole thing. Yeah, we may not be here much longer if things keep on the way they are. So, but we will get something out of the historic catalog and, and the color will be authentic, historically authentic. So, yes. Thank you for watching 1834 Restoration House. And we really appreciate you watching the commercials and buying the mugs and helping support us in this somewhat difficult time. Yes. In limbo kind of thing in life. It's our only income right now, so we really appreciate it that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's helping us finish this room. <laughs> yep. Thank you very much for all your comments and your well wishes and all of your prayers.